Thank you so much for having me here. I have to make a correction that I'm not the co-founder of the company, and I, actually the company was co-founded by two fellows, Dr. Montezeri and Brian Piper. My apologies for the mistake there. And what I'm presenting here is what their vision is for heart health clothes, and all the flaws will be my misrepresentation of their work. So this one, how this one is going? How should I do the next one? This one's perfect. So you all know far better than I do that heart failure is a global challenge and the major challenge also in Canada. And um, one in two Canadians have been uh, <clears throat> diagnosed with uh, uh, heart failure. I have the same problem, uh, Doc, with my vision. Uh, so, and it's the third uh, common reason for hospitalization. But one of the biggest challenge with heart failure is that 21% of those who are uh, admitted to the hospital for heart failure will be readmitted within a month. And one of the major symptoms in this population is shortness of breath due to extra fluid in the lungs. And when it comes to the heart failure, uh, as you know, uh, one of the main reasons or symptoms of the heart failure are extra fluid either in the extremities like legs and arms or in the, in the legs and arms or in the lung due to left or right heart failure. And usually what the current practice is, is to ask the uh, people with live, uh, who are living with heart failure to monitor their weight, and if there is an increase or sudden change in their weight, that represents a change in or extra fluid in the lung. But the challenge is that monitoring weight is not easy. It can easily change during the day. And in best case, it can predict hospitalization two days in advance. And there are studies showing that more accurate but invasive monitoring of the fluid in the lung can predict an increase in the lung water of two weeks prior to hospitalization. And that two weeks can provide time for the care providers and physicians to optimize medication and potentially prevent hospitalization. And that was the motivation of our group in uh, looking into what are the ways that we can help and develop technology to monitor the water and fluid and to help the people with, who are living with heart failure to manage their fluid at home or water intake better. So there are, currently there are technologies in the market for monitoring lung fluid. Uh, one of the uh, technologies is called REDS or Remote Dielectric Sensing that is basically uh, it's like a device around the chest and what it does, it uh, measures the radio frequency, uh, dielectric uh, component of the radio frequency signal. The challenge is uh, that the magnitude and the frequency range of the uh, signals will interfere with the um, implanted device, uh, like the, def uh, the pacemakers that the participants may have. Uh, which means that if someone is wearing a, or having a pacemaker, they cannot use RETS, which is the major uh, limitations of the device, and also it is bulky. The other one that is, uh, you're all familiar with is CardioMEMS that measures the pulmonary artery pressure as a measure that associates with uh, extra fluid in the lung, but it is invasive, it's expensive, and also requires clinical um, uh, support. So what we were doing uh, in our lab, and that would be my contribution to the work, is that we were using bioelectrical impedance to monitor fluid in different body segments. And it's uh, based on a simple idea that the fluid in the uh, body is a good conductance of electricity. So if there is more fluid in a segment like your arm, then there is uh, less uh, uh, resistance. Uh, like, for example, if there is more fluid in the lung, then the resistance will be less. If the fluid decreases, the resistance will increase. So if we measure the bioelectrical impedance of a segment like the arm, and then put electrodes in the, this part and then this part, 
and me measure the electrical impedance. We know the shape of the segment. We can assume that this is a big resistance. Uh, like, and then by knowing the shape, like the circumference and the length of the segment, we can measure or estimate the fluid in the arm. Like if we measure it like that, we get the uh, estimate of the fluid. If I raise my arm, the fluid is coming out of my arm because of the gravity and the resistance will increase. So that's sort of the idea that we developed. We put gel electrodes on different body segments and we showed that we can measure the fluid uh, continuously in different body segments like the leg, chest, abdomen, and neck. And, both during, and then we did a lot of studies while people were awake or uh, asleep. But the main challenge is that it still requires having these gel-based electrodes on the body segments, and it's not convenient or easy to do at home. So the idea of the company was how we can move from the gel-based electrode to dry electrodes that you can embed in a textile and finally in clothing to monitor fluid in body segments. Um, and these are some examples of the uh, sort of prototypes that we developed to monitor fluid in the legs or in the chest. We have done uh, some preliminary studies of comparing the gel-based electrode to the, I mean, basically the textile-based electrode to the gel-based electrode to monitor fluid in the leg, both the total leg fluid volume and then also the extracellular fluid. We have also done some experiments to see how, uh, again, comparing these two types of electrodes, the uh, dry textile-based electrode versus the gel-based electrode to monitor fluid in the leg and chest from evening to the morning uh, in response to like longer-term changes in the fluid. And what we're doing now is to implement these, uh, these uh, sensors in more clinical setting. So in one uh, collaboration with Dr. Susanna Mack in her right heart catheterization lab, what we're doing is in uh, patients who are referred for assessment of the pressure uh, with the right heart catheterization, we are measuring the fluid volume with the gel-based and also uh, in near future with the textile-based electrode to see how the bioelectrical impedance measurements are associated with the uh, pressure measurements that could be uh, correlated with the fluid in the lung. Um, and these are some very preliminary studies that showing that uh, basically in response to the change in posture at the very beginning is the people are sitting and then they lie down in supine. Uh, there is a change in the leg fluid volume. So from sitting to the supine, the fluid in the leg is decreasing and then there is an increase in the fluid for, uh, in the chest because the fluid is moving from the legs to the chest and upper body. The other study that we are doing is to um, improve our models uh, 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 for better measurements of the fluid in the lung. And in that one, we're uh, collaborating with Dr. Craig Simmons to, do, to test the textiles in an animal model. So the picture at the bottom shows the textile that we developed that is suited to measuring a fluid from a lung in a rat. And the, the proposal that we have is uh, we infuse the um, animal uh, lung with different levels of the fluid and look at the sensitivity of the textile measurements to, es to, me to estimate the amount of fluid in the lung. So our vision is to be able to develop these textile-based electrodes to monitor the fluid based on bioelectrical impedance that can be incorporated into clothing, for example, a shirt, and can be incorporated with other sensors or textile-based sensors for monitoring electrocardiogram or respiration that can give better understanding of the uh, uh, heart failure pathophysiology to the care providers. This is the team uh, that were uh, instrumental in working uh, and developing the technology. We're so fortunate that our work was highly supported by Ted Roger and uh, TBEP, uh, and also 
uh, to um, H2I at University of Toronto and UTES for commercialization. And without these supports, we couldn't get to this point. And hopefully, by developing this technology and the sensors in particular, we can help uh, people who are living with heart failure to have more autonomy, active involvement in their care and to improve their quality of life. And for healthcare uh, system, to reduce readmission and healthcare costs. Thank you.